Hi guys, today we are going to be changing the window regulator on my 92 UNOS. So, to give you an idea of why this is required, uh, this is the window at the moment. So yeah, I'm not even that confident to go any lower than that because it might not go back up again. Not that it matters at the moment. So yeah, we're going to be changing the regulators, which I've done before plenty of times. So this should be pretty easy. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to remove the door card. So you start by taking this little plastic piece out here. So you just need to get a screwdriver under it and that just pulls out. Then you want a fairly decently sized crosshead and there is a ball here to remove. And then there are two more bolts here and here. Place that to the side. Okay, now you need to remove the speaker grill. This just pulls off nice and easy. So now you need to move the door card itself. So there are poppers all the way around the door card here, like this. And there are no poppers on the top part. And the top part is really easy to snap off the second part. It's just connected by some little plastic brackets. So what you need to do is you need to go around the bottom part which is cardboard backed, and just really carefully pop off, so you can pop off the poppers, so you've got them all off. Okay. Right, okay, so next we need to remove the door handle surround. So there is a small screw. There's a small screw in the door handle surround, so just remove this. And then the handle surround should just pop off a little bit fiddle. Like so, careful not to lose the screw. Okay, so now the door card should lift up upwards, like so. The next thing to mention is how nasty this sort of black stuff is. You can see this, I don't know if this has been off before or not, it doesn't look perfect. But yeah, this um, sticky stuff here is really horrible, which is sticking on this, uh, this weatherproof plastic. I think it's just to stop the uh, moisture getting into the door. So next you're going to need to remove the handle here. So to remove the handle you're going to have to remove these rods. So the clips just sort of rotate away and then the rod just comes out here. And then for this one you're going to have to peel back this. And that one just rotates downwards and then you push the rod out. Simple as that. And then we can remove the handle with these three bolts here. Uh, so it's probably, maybe it's a 10 mil height, or you can use a cross out screwdriver. Then the handle just removes like that. Easy. Okay, so now you're going to need full access to the, the door. So Carefully, try not to uh, rip this plastic, just carefully pull it away. As I said, this black stuff is super nasty. Just going to divide that to make it easier to put back on again. Okay, so the first thing to do is to remove these two bolts here. And these hold stops in that stop the window going too high. So I think they're a 10. Yep. Okay, so just remove the stop and I usually just put the bolt back in so I remember where it went. Where it went.
Okay, so next up you're going to want to remove the window glass. So we need to get the bolts accessible. So you need to put the window down. So the bolts are going to be accessible through here and here, I think. So yeah. Now we can get access to the bolts here, here and here. So these are 8mm bolts, so just remove the 3 8mm bolts. And then to remove the window, just grab the glass and pull it up. And that's the window out. So it's worth checking this bush here, make sure it's still round. That one looks surprisingly good and is actually greased. Someone's obviously tried to make this window good in the past by re-greasing. In my experience that fairly, very rarely works. Okay, so disconnect the motor and then you're going to want to unbolt the mechanism. So let's start with the motor. So these three bolts hold the motor on and then you want to undo uh, these two bolts here and then there are two bolts underneath here. So it's a 14 for these two top ones. And also a 14 for these two bottom ones here. Okay, so that's all the bolts removed to get the winder mechanism out. It's not all of the window sliders. So there is a slider here, which you might want to take out and grease. I'm going to check to see if it's greased, and if it is, I'm going to leave it. If not, I'm just going to spray some white lithium grease into it. I've got a spray can one. I'm not going to remove it this time. Okay, so the tricky thing now is to get the motor out because this pillar goes all the way down. So let's just put it out there. You usually seem to have to twist it. Rotate it 180 degrees. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention pop out these um, clips. So these are holding the cables on for the window motor. So just pop these out. You might need a uh, a screwdriver just to help you pull them out. Okay. Pop them in what hooks us. Okay. And then it's just a case of maneuvering these somehow, <laughs> however you can, to get them over. So sometimes when the motor is really tight, there's a bolt here you can undo. So there's a bolt here you can undo, and that will then free off this, so it will push back just a tiny bit. So you're not going to be able to move it much, but sometimes it's just the amount you need to get the motor out of there. So. So now you can move that back just slightly. There we go. Just the amount of space. That's just the amount of space I needed to get that motor out there. Okay, and that's it. So pretty easy. I probably made it look a lot harder than it actually is there. But yeah, it's pretty easy. Just looking at this. This doesn't look in that bad a shape. It's really, really dry. But it's still worth replacing it. I've never found that. Oh yeah, look. You've got. Oh, it's just a bit of grease. I've never found that just greasing them up really helps that much. And replacing them is definitely the best option. Uh, bit of advice based on my experience: don't buy these used, no matter what they say. They are not going to work properly. And. Don't buy rubbish ones, buy decent ones. So I'm not gonna fit genuine, they're just way too expensive, but the ones I've got are from Autolink. Autolink only sell decent OEM 
quality products, so the ones I'm going to fit are, are good. So yeah, don't don't cheap out on them. I've tried blueprint ones, I've tried secondhand ones, and they're just all rubbish. Stick to the big shops, MX-5 parts, Autolink, and you can't go wrong. Okay, so the new one actually has a different electrical connector on, so I'm going to go ahead and solder this onto the new one. Okay, I'm up in the office just to show you what I'm doing here. I've got this, which is the connector off the old motor that I just removed. And then with the new kit, you get these spade connectors and these little covers for them. Not really worth much, but I'm going to solder these onto this cable so I can connect it to the new one. Now, yes, it would be far nicer to chop the new cable and solder directly, which I have done previously, but I can't remember which way around these wires need to go because if you wire them the wrong way around then the switch works in the inverse to what you expect. So that's the reason they give you these in the kit. It's just easier to be able to switch them with the spade connectors if you get them wrong. And let's face it, it's in inside the window. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and solder these now. Okay, so that's them soldered on. I think that's how they go. I've never actually done this before. Um, with these joints, uh, with these um, sort of like casings, but I think that seems right. I think the other ones have a larger case and it goes over and creates a bit of a seal. Um, yeah, so let's go and fit the new window regulator and connect it up and see what happens. Okay, so the downside of this kit is the instructions that tell you where you bolt it uh, for the passenger door. So you have to kind of reverse it in your mind for the driver's door. But it's not a problem. Let's go ahead and try and fit it. Okay, so it looks like the motor's going to use this bolt here and this bolt hole here. So I think that's pretty already, pretty much already lined up. Okay, so that's the motor lined up with these two bolts. As per the diagram. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, okay so that's kind of the new You know, so that goes there. Yeah, the one towards the rear of the door is the one at the bottom, and the one at the top is the left hand one of the two that you took out earlier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit fit the loom that we just modified Put that into the original connector and then if we get these and um, let's just try it okay so I've reconnected the loom just really loosely because these connectors are really tight so I don't have to sort of take them out and do it again uh, so let's just see if the window works and there we go straight away we've got it the wrong way around so, if you do buy from Autolink, then original black goes to green and blue goes to red. Okay, so now we've got them connected, what well, I think is right around. So if we go up, it goes up, it goes down, it goes down. You can already see that they're working so nice and smooth. So let's just line up the holes so we can put the window back in. Turn it off. I'm also not so happy with how well these have sealed, so I'm just going to put a bit of tape on there. So clip down out of the way. We've lost the clip because we were using the place where the wiring used to clip into as a bolt for the, for the motor, so we've lost that, so yeah, just push it down there. 
Okay, so now off camera I'm going to go and clean the window. So I've just sprayed a little bit of white lithium grease. So it's just, just to help it a little bit in that old runner. The new runner came greased, so there's no point in greasing that again. It's just to help it along a little bit. Okay, so now you want to place the window in. So kind of just line it up into the pillar of the front. Give it a wiggle until it goes in. And you're aiming to get this bush here into this runner. Okay, so the thing that I was struggling with then was this clip was jamming on the uh, door window seal. So I just unclipped it and I can just clip it back in now. Okay, so now the window's roughly in place, we should be able to start putting the bolts in. So we left the window mechanism a little bit loose, just so we've got a little bit of uh, maneuvering space. Okay, let's tie up this bolt here. Okay, and we've tightened up the one underneath there. So the only thing left to do before testing it, and I don't really know if this is required, but I always put at least one stop in here because I don't want to have the window come higher than it should. So You can see where it was before, where it's marked the paint. So just kind of line it up to the same spot. Okay, we've got one stop in there, so let's give it a test now. So. And that's the window fitted. Okay, it's no BMW, but it's probably as good as an MX-5 is ever going to get. So, fit the other window stop. Okay, so now we're ready to put the plastic back on and reassemble the dock. So, route this rod through the hole that we screwed before. Okay, and then kind of try and line these holes up and then put the nasty, nasty plastic back on as it was. Okay, so the next job is to do this. So. Again, that just pushes into the hole and then the plastic tab rotates into it. Okay, and then this just goes into this little Rub that thing, which lines up there, and then you can reattach this. Pushing it in and then clipping it round. So I always used to be a little bit scared of doing stuff like these, but there's no need to be scared at all. It's super, super easy. Okay, so now we're ready to put the door card back on. So a little caveat with that is Sometimes when you pull the door card off, like what's happened here, some of the poppers have decided to stay in the door. So we just need to pull them out. And then we just place these in the door card. You can kind of just press them down. You go in the big hole and then press down into the smaller hole. Okay, and the door card goes on by hooking on the top.
like that. There's a pin here, so you'll feel that drop, like we just did then. And then and just push, push all of them poppers back in, and then that's it. So next step is to fit this little fiddly thing. So just kind of slides on and in. So then the retaining screw just goes in there. Just double check they're working okay. And then the next step is to screw this on. So. Pop a little cap in. And take the speaker cover. I've got two holes there. And that's it, that's the window fitted. So give it a quick test. Fantastic. And if you are an idiot like me and you forget to do this bolt, I suggest you move in to help. Luckily, with the door card on, you can still get to it. Sorted.